It's been shown in hundreds of movies. It was badass. Women are attracted to it. Rihanna licked it? Yeah. Oh, I'm jealous. You got this uh, great tat. What is that of? Well, you must have met people who have had you tattooed on them. Actually, I have. <laughs> but the weirdest one was Danny Trejo. He started working, and of course, he landed on the movie that I, my first movie that I did. You were a criminal. Yeah. They told me you're gonna meet this prisoner that is now an actor, and he's was a little bit afraid. Selma Hayek. Oh God, you're just like stunning. And when he saw me for the first time, he ran towards me and ripped his shirt off. And I showed her my tattoo. I said, I knew you before. I knew you. That's a picture of you, honey. And sure enough, there was a, a picture of a woman that looks exactly like me. Salma then did something that surprised even Danny. She invited him home. Salma soon learned that Danny wasn't just an ex-criminal. He was the most feared inmate in America's most dangerous prison. San Quentin. Never know what to expect. Yeah! I've got about six on six. I've seen inmates stabbed in the neck, throats sliced. This was the only prison in the state to use a gas chamber. Some of the most violent people in the world. Manson may have been responsible for as many as 35 killings. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. Danny was so feared that even Charles Manson asked him for protection. It was hard to believe that he had been that person. Before his life of crime, Danny was a boy who liked to play with girls. My aunts and girl cousins adored me. We did everything separately from the men. We played make-believe and dress-up and played with dolls. One day my Uncle Rudy came in the girl's bedroom, saw me in a dress and went ballistic. We Trejos had to be masculine in every way at every moment. All of a sudden I move in with my dad. So My dad. So shit really changed. It's 1951. The Trejo family are having a barbecue. Everyone is avoiding the fact that six-year-old Danny has been locked in the car. My aunts wanted to help, but they were too scared to get involved. So everyone continued picnicking while I watched. Danny had learned that being a man meant never showing weakness. So he stayed quiet in the scorching heat. I started falling asleep or passing out, but I fought it so hard. I leaned back against the seat, then curled up on the floor. I was losing consciousness. But suddenly, someone came to help. My Uncle Gilbert was the only person who wasn't scared of my dad. Though Danny's father had told everyone to leave Danny in the car, Uncle Gilbert pulled him out. My dad was yelling at him about it, and Gilbert told him to lighten up. He was a hero. I prayed to God, let me be like that. In the years that followed, Uncle Gilbert offered Danny something his parents didn't. I can remember asking my mom, she was on the phone going, Hey mom, she was shut the two step on the phone. And I asked my dad, Dad, hey, what? What is now my uncle Gilbert, I would say, hey Gilbert, he go, hey, hold on. What do you want, Mule? But there was a reason Uncle Gilbert always had time for Danny. Everybody knew. My mom and dad did everything to try to keep me away from him, but you know. My uncle always had a roll of money like that. Always. The girls, the car, the money. I want that. Whatever Gilbert did, I followed. If he played football, I would have been an athlete. It just so happened, he was a drug dealer gangster. When I realized Gilbert was doing robberies, I didn't I think it was bad. I thought it was kind of heroic. Uncle Gilbert was the only man showing Danny the compassion that he felt as a young kid. But when Danny turned eight, his first crime was a crime of compassion. 
We were walking around one night and heard the cows mooing. They sounded like they were suffering, so we climbed over a big fence and set them all free. They couldn't wait to get the fuck out of there. Those cows must have been in heaven for a few hours. Because dairies are under the jurisdiction of the Food and Drug Administration, the feds were all over the place. By the time Danny was 12, he discovered a dark side to his hero. He was no longer like this cool Gilbert. He was like crazy. And had my grandfather's syringe. He said, get out of here. I said, no, give me some. He says, hold this. It's a glass syringe. It does this little atomic bomb thing. And bam, he hits it. He says, let it go. And when I let it go, I seen this whole change come over him. He gave me a fix. Next thing I remember, I was soaking wet, sitting outside my grandmother's yard. I'd overdosed. It's just gone. You're not thinking, oh, well, now I don't have to worry about school. I don't have to worry about parents. I don't have to worry about... There's nothing. And all I remember is hearing the ice cream truck and getting some ice cream. Danny became exactly like his uncle. 